All right, we're going to take a look at grading and doing our check marks for um, another question from 2012. It was full of inference that particular year. Press question number four. And they gave you a question. It sort of starts you thinking about wording bias, but then it moves into a survey of adults um, that in 2007 they uh, had a survey and uh, some numbers um, said yes. Um, they did it again in um, the year 2008. Okay, and the question is, do the data provide convincing evidence? All right, so you know it's a test at this particular point. You know that there are two groups going on, so you can narrow it down to a two prop Z, two sample T. And um, we're trying to see if there is uh, evidence of it has changed. Now, the changing means it's different, not too high, too low, you know, changing higher or lower. It just has changed. So I know that this is going to be a two-tailed test going on right here. Now, um, the first check marks that we're going to take a look at are going to be based on the hypothesis part. Now, this student here learned how to do the hypothesis a little bit differently. What I would be looking for is P2007 minus P2008 is equal to zero and P2007 minus P2008 is not equal to zero, okay? Now, if you move those numbers over on the other side, you can see that this student had the right concept going on, but unfortunately, this student is not gonna get credit because you're not allowed to use the subscripts one and two in your solutions, okay? So this person is not gonna get credit for the ho and the ha, even though it is right, the subscripts are not descriptive enough, all right? So if you did what I did right here, the order is not really important because your calculator is going to do it the right way <clears throat> as, <clears throat> as long as you put it in the right way, all right? So in this particular case, I'm also looking for the words here. So I'm looking for, do you recognize that is the true population difference in proportions, okay? So the true population difference in proportions, okay? So that, they're not gonna get credit for that. But they do have the context right in the adults who respond yes in 2007 and 2008, okay? They nearly have the context. I'm gonna give them credit for that. Remember, restate the words of the problem, okay? Use their words to be able to give yourself credit on that. So I'm gonna give them a check mark. That means they're gonna get really only one check out of the four for this particular part. And I'm only looking at the first one because if, if you did it right here, you most likely did it right in the ha. So I'm not gonna like double check things, okay? So the null hypothesis states that the true population difference in the proportion of US adults who respond yes to the question um, in, December, in December of 2007 and 2008 is equal to zero. And the high is that it is, is not equal to zero, okay? All right, the next thing we're gonna look at is the conditions here. Um, I taught you how to do it in a really organized way, which makes it really easier for easy for the graders to grade. But we're gonna uh, make sure we check all nine conditions right here. I fully expect you to have group number one, group number two, 2007, 2008, show what you're using for a subscript so you know that we're doing P2007 minus P2008, put that in the middle, just in case if it's wanting you to do this one's bigger or this one's bigger, you know how to do your less thans and your greater thans, all right? So that's what I expect, and have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and a number nine. So the first thing that I'm looking for, I'm not gonna look for all of them. I'm gonna, first of all, make sure that both of the groups you know that the problem states that they were taken randomly, okay? So it says in 2008, randomly selected adults, check. 2007, randomly selected adults. I would write down the problem states that the results were, the problem states that the adults were so, uh, selected randomly, just to make sure it's very, very clear to the AP reader that you see that. The next thing that we're gonna look for is the 10% condition, all right? So in this particular problem, the 10% condition they said they checked down here instead of saying that um, 1,009 um, adults is less than 10% of all adults in the U.S. and also 1,020 is less than 10% of all adults in the U.S. They actually multiplied it by 10, and you know from looking at that there are many more than that number, 10,090 adults in the U.S. That means they're going to get their 10% condition checked off for both. 
all right we do it a little bit differently okay state your sample size and say that that certainly is less than 10 percent of all you're good to go this person does have it the next thing we're looking for is suck fail all right so what i'm looking for here is did they show the formulas okay this is group number one and this is group number two i think they did 2008 and then 2007 i'm not quite sure uh, yes okay they've shown substitution they compare to 10 I would like to see little check marks after the fact to show that you've rec recognized them those are not the check marks for grading though they did suck fail for group number one they did suck fail for the 2008 and the 2007 group check check okay the only thing that I really find painful is that their subscripts are using ones and twos that is not acceptable for the AP test okay all right now they do say all counts of successes and failures are at least 10 that takes the place of these little itty bitty check marks that they've shown so we're good to go so now i'm looking for the um, independent groups assumption all right and they did it right here okay it doesn't have context in there i would say that the 2007 u.s adults are independent of the 2008 u.s adults but they are going to get that is their condition number nine they are going to get that check and now I'm going to look for the since statement. Since all the conditions are met, we're going to be able to do a two proportion Z test. All right. Now I actually see that up here. All right. That they have named their test. Their teacher taught them to say two sample Z test. We do two proportion Z test. Okay. And they get a check for their since statement. Okay, if they don't have that num that that written down, that means you have to do it by formula the whole entire time. And we're going to do a direct copy off the calculator. You're going to use your calculator 100% of the time, and we're good to go. All right. Now, so for the conditions part, um, there were three plus three plus the independent group, so that's seven plus the since statement. There are eight checks right here, and my person got all eight of those checks. All right so the next thing that we're looking for is the mechanics part and the mechanics part right here remember you're doing a direct copy of off your calculator so it's going to be an easy check mark to get so the first check mark I need to see is the 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 p hat value Ooh, um, they uh, don't have their hat on top of that that's sort of a problem okay um, and that off the calculator is 0 0.6397. Give yourself a check if you did that. The z-score for that number, remember you're doing a direct copy of off your calculator for the mechanics. It's negative 2.82 something. Give your check mark for that. And then writing the word p-value and finding out that the p-value off your calculator is 0 0.0048. Give yourself a check for that. So the mechanics, there are three checks right here. Now my person spent way too much time, wasted time, since they named the test, they were not obligated to do all this work, all right? You can do a direct copy off your calculator. The last thing we're gonna check is the conclusion, all right? The first thing that I'm going to need to see here is using a two proportion Z test, okay, that is missing. You need to then show your p-value, state your p-value, and say that it's less than 0.05. Check. The next check is for, you need to make sure that you I reject the hoe. Check. Okay. Now, there are two I have evidence questions. The first I have evidence, you need to make sure that you restated the ha in the words of the ha that I have evidence that the true population difference in proportions of U.S. adults who respond yes to the survey question in 2007 and 2008 is not equal to zero. I am missing that here. And the last one, I have evidence, and then write the words of the question. My person has that. They wrote that right here, and they used the words of the question exactly. They are going to get this last check mark. So this last part right here, we have um, five different checks. Oh, let me make sure. One, two, three, four, five checks. My person got three out of the five. Okay. So let's see how we have. Five plus three is eight. Eight plus eight is 16. 16 and four is equal to 20. There are 20 points on this particular question. 
And my person got, let's see, 1 plus 8 is 9, 9 and 3 is 12, 12 and 3 is equal to 15. Figure out what you got, some number out of 20. Oop, let me make it down. And that concludes the grading of this question, which was definitely very open-ended.